Hi there, this is a project in Catalonia. It's a permaculture and a spiritual project. I'm surrounded by olive trees, carob trees and a few almonds and some new plantings. I'm going to give you a tour of the land, a very quick one, so you can see my projects on the go. It's a volunteer project, but it's a paid volunteer project, which means that you, you come here and you learn. This is going to be the entrance to a house. So I'm going to walk in through in the direction of north. This will be a porch area. And there will be passive solar windows here and a doorway going in on either side. It's only one space. It's a circular room which has been made into a crescent. And as you can see, when I've got my walls up, which hopefully are going to be straw bowed all the way around the outside, what you'll get is a big space that's naturally partitioned because of the crescent shape. So this area here would be slightly invisible to this area here. Now look at this for a teepee structure tower. These are pine trees which I'm cutting from the land and debarking. They're yet to be treated, but I've been given good advice to do it on the uh, full moon and afterwards, which they call the old, the old moon or the old mother. Um, there's going to be two of these. There's going to be one here, as you can see it, and there will be another one about there. And then the posts at the back uh, will finalise the structure with cross beams going across, uh, maintaining some sort of um, green roof. Nothing too heavy, probably just corrugated sheeting. And I can give you an example of a post hole. This is one of the deepest holes I could do because the ground rock is so high. It's full of charcoal at the moment and I charred the ends of the posts. Pine, uh, depending on what type of pine, but this pine is rubbish and it needs to be treated regularly. So what you're seeing is probably, uh, well, it's not probably, is and will be the, the inside of the building. And straw boughs will sit on these walls here, which will be higher, which means I'll bring the ceiling level down quite naturally. This will be infilled with more rubble. So imagine I can just get up another uh, two feet and it will be natural drainage all the way. In this area here, I will build a oven and it would be like a, a brick wall from salvage blocks with a couple of stoves in it and um, a naturally um, um, made cob oven. Now I don't need much. I do most of my cooking here. What you can see at the moment is a load of spent beeswax. As you can see the land is rather, for me it's rather red and beautiful. Um, because of the type of rock, which is called a conglomerate rock. Now here in this area, you can see I've put up a, 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 um, a row of cypress trees. Now the reason I've done that is because it, I need protection to the building. And that's the uh, northwesterly, so that's where the wind comes from basically. And this area between these two dry stone walls is probably going to be some sort of um, lock-up, um, secure building for my batteries, solar panels, generator, various other things. There'll be a door out here and I'm doing quite, um, quite a few extensive plantings here including walnut, plum, khaki, nispros or what you call Japanese locats, pomegranates, some more almonds and the intention being that eventually I would create a sort of mini food forest. Now uh, just digging this hole, this is recent, this is yesterday. Um, I found I was lucky enough to find a hole and the khaki is going to need quite a lot of water but once that's established it looks for the water beneath the dry stone walls. Uh, on the contrary this is a Japanese locat and this one's established but it's been there five years. And look at it, it's hardly grown. But it actually produces fruit, and I love it.
I've also got some embryo, which is what we call quince, and a couple of wild versions of it over there, and the large natural version of it over there. And obviously, the potential is to um, graft onto the wild stocks. There's a sweet chestnut over there which died completely back during the summer when I went on my five week cycling tour of Europe. I couldn't get anyone to volunteer properly and water my plants. But you see, nature unbelievably recovers. It's a real shame, but that tree was actually thriving before I left. And we carry on. We've got something over there called uh, San, St. John's Pear or Pera de San Juan. And again, very drought resistant. So here we are. I'm using an engine lift to pull trees out of the barranco. What the barranco is called a dry riverbed in English. The barrancos, we're full of them. We're surrounded by them. Hard work. Quite a lot of wood. But there we are. That's definitely going on the building at the back there. And then that's a dry river bed. It goes down for about maybe a hundred foot. I've located my hives over here. And I've got three thriving hives. I've recently lost three hives and we have a big problem here with uh, what we call the um, bolillo, which is a wax moth. So I've got a lot of empty hives. So the potential is to expand, but I had 10, but now I'm back onto seven. No, no, no honey crop this year. Not very good. I'm afraid if it doesn't rain, don't get flower. But now there's a little bit of a honey flow going on. Well, look at this. I pulled up this tree, I've debarked it. Pulled out the, uh, the end of the land. You can see how deep that goes down and I, smashed up all the wall doing it so what I decided to do is repair the wall with some steps going down and I've reclaimed this little bit of a, this little area which I'm probably going to put some more hives into and hives will need wind protection and the wind coming from this direction and over but look at that for a view bees can't go wrong here Carrying on, I'll take you to the next load of hives and to the system, which is my major project, which is the one that's um, backbreaking. And really, I've done it all by myself. It's not the sort of work I ask my volunteers to do. One, because volunteers don't really want to do hard work. Two, um, none of them's insured. Something goes wrong. And really, I should just get a disclaimer and get them to sign that because I'm not here to mollycoddle my volunteers. This is true grit, outdoor living. I shit underneath rocks and straw bales. I take wild walks and I use all my natural resources that are around me. And there's a beautiful cavalry. So this is why this project's called Al Korobi. And look at this for dry stone wall. Let's have a look in inside first and see what I'm up to. You can see how much work there is. I'm using recycled coffee bags from London, would you believe it? And there's a partition between the two walls in the outer. Now, this is going to be filled with water and it's going to be much higher. But I'm just coming up now to my level where I am going to infill with concrete. Once that's infilled with concrete, I'm going to excavate all of this stuff um, out and fill up more bags and go a bit higher and then hopefully i'm going to get a hydraulic jack and smash a little bit deeper down if i can just go one foot extra down that's a huge amount of extra water so this is going to be my temple system which firemen are going to have access to but i'm going to take you around to see the uh, stonework and it's needs to be jointed and that's a job for a volunteer there's a lot of work here. It's already gone into it. And at the same time, I have to get the rock from somewhere. So if you look at what I'm doing, I'm repairing walls everywhere I need stone. 
and this is going to be the grand staircase and as I say th these structures are going to be multi are going to have a multi-use there's going to be probably fish in there and plants I'm going to have a dip in there I mean I I swim nearly every other day here to wash and then to the back of the land where I wouldn't mind keeping a couple of goats or something to clean up the place and then we have a few more hives and these beehives are thriving uh, and I've been regularly coming here every day just watching wax moth going in and you have to imagine some of these wax moths are huge they're big twice the size of your thumb uh, but these thrives here are absolutely thriving very happy with these I may get some honey at the end of the year but let's carry on looking at this structure and then I'll take you to the the Invernadella which is the arc or the food tunnel. One uh, interesting plant which survives in very little water is the jujube. And there it is. Um, they call it uh, g gingos. Not jinko. Biloba, ginkgos. It's a fruit, it's completely unrelated. And here's my dog, Mungo. Blind, has no eyes, but follows me around. He's my companion, my champion. And you can hear me. <laughs> okay, look at this. This is what volunteers can do. Just let them get on with it. Go out harvesting cane, weaving a tunnel. Now, I've done most of this. But this end piece that was done by a couple of volunteers a few years back, and these agave cactus flat, uh, spikes are still standing after three years, easily replaceable. But the idea is to have the structure covered in growing plants, bioengineering basically. So uh, unsuccessfully, I've had three attempts at growing kiwis here, gets too dry, so now I'm onto the grapes. And I want a fast growing grape to cover that whole structure. Over in this corner, have an apricot. That went in this year. And all of these aubergines, look, recovered. Went away for five weeks and recovered from being brown stalks. Unbelievable drought resistant plants, as well as the cauliflowers and the cows, also drought resistant. Parsley self-seeding. We never need to plant any more parsley. And in fact, the uh, artichokes also came up from root systems just as soon as the first real rains come. And there's my dog, Mungo. Hello, Mungo. <laughs> so coming down to this end, I've tried for the fourth year now to grow kiwi. And I've put it in the place of the old grape hoping that that will recover as well but that looks completely dead so <clears throat> the idea is to get irrigation systems good and running here and as you can see this all this pump uh, all this system is run on a pump where it pumps water when it gets to a particular level uh, rainwater um, tops it up and then it's pumped into this bottom system here and then I uh, will change it eventually in, in due course when I get more battery power but basically I can pump from here to the top system to create my gravity feed uh, battery operated irrigation system and there we have it two batteries with a, another pump run um, and, and controlled by regulator worth investing So to conclude, I'm creating a dry composting toilet here. So this is my area for composting. There's rabbit manure, um, charcoal, biochar, which I make myself using those two barrels over there, and reclaimed joists from London. That's the base of my composting toilet. And as you can see, this is where I'm getting a lot of rock from, but at the same time, I'm repairing this wall. So, gradually, 
I I get closer to my dream and my vision. But you can't go forwards with just uh, without any real um, plantings. And I'm I've probably planted at least 15, 20 trees. So when I did my cycle trip, um, I was sponsored, and they produced a, a bunch of T-shirts, and I gave those t-shirts away or I sold them in exchange for trees there's um, a huge amount of the infrastructure here I mean there's there's rock everywhere and it's very very difficult to get anything established to get anything that isn't drought resistant established and to be honest we've had a drought now which is really kicking in so I have to be here most of the time it should be a volunteer project but at the moment I'm doing most of the work myself very enjoyable if you like hard work it's a passion for it but sometimes if you're not going to live in the place then you may find it quite difficult to um, to want to invest your time and energy in such a thing but I do welcome people back if they've got some real contributions now look at this is a fig it's one of my trees what I bought for my journey and uh, castor oil plants hazel didn't actually succeed Castor oil plant and the lemon over there. Gravestone over there of my dog. Slowly building up walls. A real centre of operations and here's my lovely champion dog. Mm. Hello Mungo. <laughs> Beautiful. And I'm going to sign off with your face. <laughs>